I was giving a meeting as usual, villagers happy with their hums and haws, until suddenly a portal sucked me inside, vanishing as quickly as it appeared. Where am I? Downtown? But something was off. The streets were completely empty. As I made my way down the road, I spotted a building. It had some sort of weird growth on it. When I got closer, it seemed like there was somebody there. Wait, that's no person. Suddenly, more and more stepped out into the light, and inside the building, it was full of them. I ran away as quickly as I could. That must be the hive. I ended up running all the way to the gate front of my mansion. Going inside, I found another hiding in my driveway and I ran past him. And then there it was, my Malibu mansion in all of its glory. Heading inside the foyer, there was more inside. I pushed it away and I grabbed the emergency stick off the wall. I knew I had no other choice but to take them down. Safe for now, I made my way up to the bar and grabbed some bread hanging around. Next, I made my way down into the garage where Jarvis welcomed me. The garage seemed to be empty, so I went down some stairs where I was able to grab an untested project I had been working on. I then made my way over to the elevator where I went to the second floor. Here, I found a zombie waiting and took him down. Making my way into the bedroom, I grabbed some blueprints that may come in handy later. By now, a zombie entered the room and with more on the way, I was forced to break through the window. Running across the rooftop, I had no other choice but to jump. I slowly sank below the surface. Waking up, I had landed on the beach of an island. I gathered up a decent supply of logs from some trees and found that my suit's crafting ability had a bit of a glitch. I got a crafting table down and gathered up some stone to upgrade my wooden pickaxe. I found some sugarcane around, which I replanted for future growth. Next, I started digging in hopes of finding iron ore. I made my way into a small cave and had to use my repulsors to beam four of the zombies inside. I was able to find some iron, but coal would be nice for some light. With it being night, I already had a creeper come say hello. Um, I got some logs thrown into the furnace where I got charcoal and got my iron smelted to make some shears, which helped me craft up a bed for the night. Day two, I went down into the mines, this time with light, and started gathering up as many ores as I could find. With a tree tap made, I was also able to get some resin from some rubber trees around, making sure to take them down not only for the logs, but saplings too. With night setting in, I went to bed. Day three, I decided I would only get so much from an island, so I packed up my items and flew over to the mainland with my limited flight. I found a crater that had some iron ore as well as some coal, and then I stumbled into an abandoned castle. We could we could overtake. We we found this. Look at this overgrown like kind of castle. Boys, we could make this the Stark the Stark Paradise. With chat in agreement, I threw our items into a chest and went to find some friends that gave us food. Day four, we had breakfast and used our repulsors to clear out some grass. Yeah, that's way cooler way to get grass to get half a stack of seeds. I built a quick little farm in the center of the castle and planted some of our rubber trees in the plains. With some ore smelting, it was time for bed. Now day five, we made some iron pickaxes and started another mining tunnel. We got all the way to bedrock and started a diamond search at Y equals 11. Well, hello there. I will gladly take the diamonds. That's no problem at all, boys. Let's go. Not much further in, we got lucky and found even more diamonds. I gathered up a bunch of ores with the vein miner ability I was able to equip with my massive Stark brain. Three extra diamonds and a lot more ore grabbed up, and I returned to the surface for sleepy time. I decided to make a bit more storage chests and got everything organized a bit. By now, a couple of the rubber trees grew, and I was able to take those down, as rubber will be very good later on. More pickaxes, and I had another mining spree. I was able to get four more diamonds and a lot more ore. Got 12 of these bad boys now. Day 8. I started making electronics and got those upgraded to Stark Electronics, which got me the Stark workbench made, where I got work on making my first Iron Man suit. We decided to start going for the good old Mark 1 suit. I needed to make an arc reactor, so I made a diamond pickaxe and went into the mine to get some palladium ore, and I mined a bit more. Now day 10, I did some more crafting and got the reactor made. I then took a little flight around the area in search of a cave system, only found little baby caves. Day 11 was full of mining, and day 12 I got to work making an energy condenser. As all things in the universe is made of matter, this handy item will help us break down any item into matter to create other items. With that made, I tested it out by converting stacks of cobblestone into raw chicken, which I then turned into cooked pork chops. Day 13, I had made a bunch of stone pickaxes and mined a bunch of cobble, and got that cobble working on creating a diamond, which would take about 8,000 blocks of cobblestone to create one diamond. Next, I got to work making a bunch of items and electronic components, 
which got us the A Miner, which can auto mine for supplies. And well, to use this miner, we need to supply it with not only electricity, but a drill, which I have neither of. So day 14, I got some rubber trees harvested and did a bit of peaceful fishing, which did not end so peacefully as night came and I fought a bunch of stuff. Then this happened. <laughs> No! Which, yeah, it's kind of cool, but it's utterly impossible for me to win this fight. So I ran off before Godzilla noticed me, and when I came back, luckily, Godzilla was gone. Now day 15, I was back home and set up some stuff just to make the area a bit more secure. Now to get more work done for the suit. So I went out and I gathered up leather in the most humane way possible, of course, and used the saved up EMC that was going towards the diamond to make more leather, to then make leather armor. Getting closer, day 16, I did more mining and started making that cobble into iron ingots. Day 17, I got an iron pickaxe to mine all the ores down in the open area I made. Left the diamonds to wait for Fortune 3 though. With a surplus of ores, I made another chest and put all the smelted ores inside. With that done, I had a lot more stuff for the suit. Just need a lot of titanium and iron. All of day 18, I spent my time flying around in search of a village. Day 19, I was able to find one was looking for a villager trade that had glowstone. A villager did not have a trade, but one of the houses actually had a singular glowstone block. Lucky me. I stole lots of books and some potatoes before heading towards base, and then I found a lot of pigs on the way. Getting home, a blood moon decided to rise. I sat on the broken down castle for the night to pass. A big zombie horde ended up making its way here, and I was forced to fight them off the whole night. Now day 20, I was safe and sound, and with my glowstone, I was able to make the philosopher's stone. Philosopher's stone! Woo! Making some titanium plates, all I needed was the final piece to complete the Mark 1. I. I went mining some more and used the Philosopher's Stone to change a mob into an Enderman, which gave me an Ender Pearl. Day 21, I started tearing down the parts of the castle to make room for an enchanting area. Since my diamond pickaxe is almost broken, I went and grabbed up some of the diamonds below and made a brand new pickaxe. I enchanted that pickaxe and got efficiency 4 and I'm breaking 3. Day 22, I tried to enchant my other pickaxe in hopes of getting fortune, but it turns out it used all 30 of my levels instead of just three. Next, I grabbed some obsidian and made another portal. Made sure to eat some Chick-fil-A for good luck though. Getting inside, I jumped on the portal and fought off some mobs with my beams before absolutely destroying this gas with its own fireball. No way. No way! First try! That's what I'm talking about, boys! After fighting them forever, I went back to the base and fought off mobs throughout the night. Next day, I did a bunch of crafting and was able to make a generator and macerator that grinds up coal into coal dust, which will help me make solar panels to harness the power of the sun. At night, I spent more time fighting the enemies of the dark, and the next day, I spent all day crafting, but now it's time to craft the first suit. Once that was done, we admired all of its beauty, and well, it turns out it can't fly. It does a little bit of damage. So making some items for the portable modular device, we are back to the dreaded green dye. With my old Stark Under Armour, I took flight and traveled a few days until I finally found a desert and got that cactus I needed. Heading home, I got some rubber trees taken down and ended up running into a massive pyramid. Inside, I didn't really find anything, but using my flamethrowers to go through the walls, I found a chest. Nothing even good. I ended up fighting lots of mobs before leaving. Getting home, I smelted the cactus for green dye and made the portable modular device. Next day, I went back to that village we found earlier and discussed with chat where we would like to build a base. Either the rocket ship or windmill. With a simple vote, chat picked the rocket ship. I then beat up some escaped convicts that thought they could take down a man literally in a metal suit. Returning home, I crafted up everything I would need to make the biggest backpack possible and gathered up all my materials to make trips back and forth to transfer all my items. Now day 42, not only did we have everything moved, but everything was organized as well. I ended up finding a ravine right under the rocket ship house and decided this would be the perfect place to make a base. At night, I was hit with a blood moon and I decided it was the perfect time to start on the base. Using cobblestone, I laid out the general idea and put glass on the floor. I then dug out a spot for the storage room and grabbed up a bunch of logs to make a ton of chests, which fit in perfectly. Spruce always looks good, so I went out and got some spruce to put down a nicer looking floor. With the stairway made a bit nicer, it was already day 46. Since the Mark 1 cannot fly, I went to look for another suit. After a quick vote, we landed on the Mark 6. And after an absurd amount of working, crafting, making electronics, plates, alloys, and whatever, 
whatever else we need, everything was good to go. Now we have a really nice looking Iron Man suit. I made sure to make a nice display case for the Mark 1 suit and used our new suit to fly back to the old base to enter the nether. I wanted to gather up quartz for the base. We had a few problems. Number one being quartz takes forever to mine. Number two, quartz has a high EMC value, meaning I cannot just change other items into it easily. And last, number three, the nether is still very dangerous. So I decided to try these white stone bricks instead. Yeah, not a fan. So concrete is gonna be the way to go. So I went out in search of a gravel mountain and chat reminded me that oceans have a great amount of gravel. The Iron Man suit didn't like the water too much, but it was easy gathering nonetheless. Also got all the sand I could ever need as well. I got back home on day 55 and got some bones made for bone meal. With a whole bunch of concrete powder made, now the fun stuff, turning it into concrete. Which since we aren't on a newer version of Minecraft, I don't have an offhand to put the powder into. So manually it was. After doing about two rows of this, it was already day 60. Now with an abundance of concrete, it was time to fancy up the base. This ended up taking a while, but now the ravine looks a bit more like a modern futuristic thing. With yet another trip to the nether, I went and gathered up a bunch of glowstone since I can get quite a bit and it's worth a lot of EMC. Really good for making a lot of iron. And plus some glowstone lights make the base look a little bit brighter. And now since the bottom floor is glass, why not make the top glass as well? future looking stuff. And now for the daunting task of organization, which is always so much fun and took a couple of days. Next, I dug out a small spot to put a furnace smelting area and crafting table. With that done, I made some bookcases and set up a level 30 enchanting area. Heading outside, I went and gathered up some leaves and vines to add a bit of greenery and vegetation to the base. Starting to make more solar panels and as well as crafting an extractor, which allows us to make rubber out of rubber tree logs. Now with 12 solar panels, I dug out a decent sized room and went to the surface to clean out an area for the solar power, which got interrupted by more loose prisoners. Someone needed to be fired at the prison, so annoying. With the panels up, I ran cables down through the ground into the room I just cleared out. I put down the miner and extractor, and now we are connected to the solar power. Now just need to make a drill for the miner, and I'm gonna show you how long it really takes to make stuff. Step one, we craft a hammer and use that hammer to smash tin into plates, and then we smash them some more to get these things. Next, you use redstone and tin cables to make a re-battery. Re now we just need some of these item castings, but in iron. But we also need to make some coils, which are made from copper cables, which come from smashing copper into plates and cutting them into wires. We use all this stuff to make a motor, and then you need to make an electronic circuit like this, and then combining all that together to make a power unit, which is surrounded by plates to make the drill. But if we want a diamond tip drill, gonna need whatever this is. Luckily, putting the drill in the miner gives it power, but it's not mining just yet. I need to make a mass which takes a machine block and some flint to build. Not too bad, but this allows us to grind up items into nice little piles. And with enough small dust, we make a big dust to make bronze dust. And with a quick break, we decided to craft up one of these generators for the condenser chest, which sadly didn't work when placing it. Turns out it needs to be in the sun to work, but hey, it's always generating EMC for us now. I should have made this a long time ago. Now with enough bronze dust, we are able to make bronze ingots that then get smashed into these things to make a bigger battery. And with a few extra items, we have a scanner made so we can actually start mining. And with even more crafting, I went back to solar panels to give us more power. Made a lot of them this time and going outside, I had to deal with some not so friendly mobs. It was an arsenal barrage. Yeah, dug a straight hole into my base, which I covered up as quick as I could. Laying down all the solar panels, everything is looking very nice. And now our miner is actually like mining things. Now all the ores lurking in the ravine have been there long enough. So I decided to clear out a bunch of those and got them smelting. Now with the miner doing so well, I want to get that diamond drill. So we got to make this thing, which I am not going to bore you with. Let's just say it took a few days to figure this thing out. With that being made, we were missing one key ingredient, the diamonds. Having no emeralds, which could help us make diamonds easily, I took off to look for another village, since sadly all of our villagers have died. I didn't find a village, so I decided to go for another strategy. I went into the nether because I found that magma blocks, for whatever reason, are worth an ungodly amount of EMC. I decided to gather up some gold, glowstone, and quartz while here because why not? And I filled up on a bunch of magma blocks. When I got back to base, I made as many emeralds as I needed for another project and turned the rest into diamonds. 
And, well, we got enough diamonds now. Seeing the profits, I made some extra pickaxes and did another trip for some more, which this time I threw into the transmutation table to get 2 million EMC stored up. You can pull items out of this and it's way easier than using the chest. I made myself some emerald blocks and got a new anvil to get the suit repair unit made. But it's kind of worthless without a generator, so I had to make a temperature regulator and engine in order to get the generator to power the repair unit, which lights up all nice and fancy. But now I set my sights on missiles and more importantly, a nuclear missile, which requires me to do a bunch of crafting in order to make the launch control panel, the launcher itself, and the brace for the missiles. With those done, I started to clear out an area for a silo. I got the main room looking about how I wanted it to before digging all the way up to the surface, putting fancy concrete for the walls all the way up to the top, and also glowstone for lights with some additional decoration. It was looking perfect to destroy a whole city. I even decorated the hallway into it, making it look all future and stuff. Checking the control panel, there was a red text that lets us know we need some power, which isn't as easy as just running a cable, as the mod for the rockets and the mod for the solar panels use two different types of power. So I had to make these fancy little things, which is a whole separate mod from the two to convert the power to the other power, just so I get power so it works. Now, while we wait for the control panel to get enough power, I found a little testing site not too far away from base. With the coordinates locked in place, I got looking at missiles to craft. Had to make some TNT to make extra fancy explosives to make the most basic missile possible. But hey, we loaded it up on and it looks glorious. With it lit up green by now, we are ready to launch the test. Um... Go! Oh! Hey, well there it goes, boys! Holy crap! Well, we know where it's gonna land! <laughs> it scared the crap out of me when it shot off because it's loud as cuss. Go! Oh! The explosion broke almost five stacks of sand total, and since it was so much fun, we decided to do it again. But this time we are testing it out with the remote launcher. That's so satisfying. Where is it? Oh, and there it goes. With the fun down, it was time to get serious. We needed to craft a nuke. We made incendiary explosives, dehabilitation explosives, chemical explosives, and slapped all those together with repulsive explosives to make thermobaric explosives. And with nine of those, we had a nuclear bomb, which we strapped to a missile to make a nuclear missile. With it placed on the launch site in all of its glory and being near to day 100, we decided to wait till day 100 to launch. In the meantime, one of the final pieces of the base needs to be made, a proper place to store our armor suits. So clearing out an area and filling it with concrete, I made a fancy looking room. I placed a Mark 1 in its spot and well, the armor case looks kind of jank. And I found out that I can use an armor stand and that looks a hundred times better. Even placing my current suit I am wearing, it gave a good look at the potential for this room. But by the time all this was done, the sun was setting on day 99 to bring us to day 100 and it's time to launch ourselves a nuclear missile into New York City. Yeah. 